Hi everyone, this is Paul Asadorian from Secure World Boston 2017. I'm here with my good friend Tom. Tom, I actually don't know where you're from or what you do, but I see you at the conferences and um, we speak frequently. Absolutely. So why don't you tell our, our viewers and listeners what, what you do. Okay. Uh, well, right now I'm, I'm actually starting a new ven uh, venture. I've uh, started a company called CyberGuide. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, obviously, as it says, it's the opportunity, you know, the trying to help uh, people out, a lot of companies that... Um, let, let's just say they don't know what they don't know or they don't know where they where they want to go and and one of the things I want to try to focus on is the idea that um, maybe it doesn't take six months or three months to help help your environment that you know what maybe what all you need is uh, several hours of sitting down and, and just you know almost brainstorming as it were so mm. that's, that's kind of where I'm going right now so you're doing like coaching session. Uh, yeah in a way for co I coaching that, for that fits your personality very well you're very easy to talk to and, and of so. course hence Lord of the Cyber Realm. Lord of the Cyber <laughs> Realm. So Lord of the Cyber Realm is going to do security philosophy with me today. Mm. Uh, and we're just going to ask you some random questions I prepared okay. on security philosophy. Um, so kind of along uh, what you were just saying, what is the most common trait amongst organizations that have suffered a security breach in your experience? Well, the easy one normally has to do with... Uh, uh, Ad, ad, administrative rights. Yes. You know, uh, wrong access. Um, that's probably probably the first and foremost. And then probably the next one after that is, um, yeah, can't seem to get people not to click on something. Don't click on stuff. Don't click on that. Yes. And and just just to point that out, uh, I, I recently helped an organization. We did a, a phishing program for an organization. Mm -hmm. um, it was in the medical community. Now the nurses, they fell big time for uh, a new a new line of uh, clothing. They fell big time, 67 percent. The doctors went really big time for a free lunch <laughs> in the cafeteria at 77 percent. Wow! But the one that hurt the most was the IT group at almost 80 percent wanted to see vacation pictures. Oh my God! So they posed as the IT group wanting to see vacation yep, pictures? Yep. I got you. And, and, e and even worse here, this is the part I like the best, trying to help people out so they wouldn't fall for it even. So if they, if they, if they hovered over the URL the way you're supposed to, if you're not sure for right, yeah. it actually said, don't do it. <laughs> and they did it And they anyway. still did it. You can't, you can't prevent it, it right? <laughs> um, so along these lines, Tom, what is the best way to determine which security solutions you need and the best way to evaluate them. Well, obviously, first and foremost, is probably a, 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 a security risk assessment um, with someone like yourself, actually. Someone like myself, but you know what? <laughs> Doesn't have to be. But you know what? You could even do it internally. But yeah. but but more importantly, is when's the last time it's been done to? Mm -hmm. Because you you know organizations they might do it, and you know they do some remediation in that, and then you know life goes on, work goes on, and then before you know it, six months a year has gone by. It's it's stopped. And it doesn't get back to it, and after another two years, it's almost meaningless. Then, uh, let's see. What, you want one more? Sure. Okay. Does compliance hinder or enhance security, and why? That's a loaded one too. Yeah, I gave you quite uh, a doozy there, Tom. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> let's let's go back to what we what we all know, and that is, you can be compliant, but that does not actually guarantee better security. Mm -hmm. What it means is you're compliant. Now. What you really want then is you want compliance plus, and that's why that, 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 that's a term I'll say. Is, um, yes, you you met all your compliance. Now, what do you really need to go beyond that to to help your organization as as, as much as you can? And by the way, that's where you do your prioritization, the low hanging fruit, whatnot. Yeah. So that I like, but I really like that, Tom. Most people think of low hanging fruit and a starting point as being just a general thing. You're saying that's above where you need to be compliant. I love that. I think that's great. Tom, thank you very much. You're very welcome. For Paul, sharing your information. Nice, nice seeing you again. Thank you.